If your dog learns that any attention is good attention, then that means they're going to do whatever it is that gets your attention. If good behaviors are reinforced by you, they're going to repeat good behaviors. If unwanted behaviors are given attention by you, then they're going to repeat the unwanted behaviors, just as this episode of The Middle demonstrates for us. Dad, so glad you're home. I got markers, stencils, and jewels, and I thought we could each make a page for the Summer of Sue and Dad book, but we don't know what the other is doing, and then we dedicate them to each other. Hang on, Sue. Axel, what are you doing? I am pen face. <laughs> Well, be book face instead of studying. You got a lot of material to cover by Friday. Uh, how many times have you taken 11th grade English? Because I've taken it twice now, so I think I know a little bit more than you. Dad, glitter glue or sharpie markers? How is that so? Okay, let's take a little quiz. In the first act of Death of a Salesman, which character? Death. Death isn't even a character, Axel. That's fine. I guess we'll just sit here and go over this together. And it was at that moment Sue realized attention didn't have to be positive. And maybe negative attention was better than no attention at all. So Sue set out to explore her dark side. Well, dark for Sue. She used Mike's razor. Not using a coaster. Nope. Hot day too. What else? She didn't wind up the hose. And worst of all... Go to bed without my headgear! Even though the orthodontist totally recommends I wear it at night. But I don't care! What else? So as we headed into the final few days of summer, we were all frustrated. Some of the things our well-meaning friends and family have told us to do to our dogs in order to get rid of an unwanted behavior can be just as ineffective on our dog as it is on a human. This episode of The Middle, called Bunny Therapy, shows us just that. So after agreeing we were smarter than a therapist, Mike and I went about fixing Brick's tick in the way only loving parents can do. Whoop! Knock it off! Using food as a reinforcer. A lot of people are against it, but why? Are you getting married? It's probably going to be a wedding reception with food. Going on a date? Probably to dinner. Movies? Side of popcorn. Meeting up with a friend? For lunch or dinner. Friends coming over? Dinner again. What do families do despite their busy lives? They eat a meal. The first bonding experience between a mom and a baby is nursing. A business luncheon, a conference with donuts, after church refreshments with members. Sunday football with nachos and wings. Your dog sat when you asked him to. He gets a food treat. But wait, you don't want your relationship to be about food with your dog? Watch this episode of The Middle. Perfect, now just show me this blank dude's stuff and let's kick our sorry ass. <laughs> J.D. Salinger's famous book on teen angst is called Catcher in the... Right. The character Atticus Finch is from the book... Till Mockingbird. Um, F. Scott Fitzgerald's most famous novel is entitled The Great... Escape. No. Oh, train robbery. Sorry. Uh, the pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Wait, wait. Caspi. Great Caspi. <laughs> Whoa! Huh? I win! So the owner of this, of a golden and a Labrador, comes home, finds this on the floor, and is assuming that one of his dogs did it. So you will be able to tell by behavior which dog has been in trouble in the past more often than the other. Here's your golden retriever. The owner takes the bag and he sticks the bag in the dog's face. The dog is perfectly comfortable lying on the floor. Then the bag comes. The dog quickly looks one direction, get that out of my face. The dog looks the other direction, get that out of my face. Following that, he starts lip licking. There, there, there. He does three or four lip licks. Finally, it works. His communication sends the owner over to the Labrador. Clearly, the Labrador is having um, a reaction to the owner's presence because this dog has been in trouble in the past. You can see him putting the dog 
putting the bag into the dog's face once again. Now the owner in this video is not yelling at the dog. He's very calmly talking to the dog. And we can see a million behaviors saying that this dog is stressed out. The point that I'd like to make is that the owner in this video says, you know the routine. Go to your crate. And the Labrador goes off to his crate. Now, the frustrating part for me in this video is that the Labrador does not know why he has to go to his crate. He has absolutely no idea that it, it's because the owner found a chewed up bag of treats. What this dog has learned is the owner comes home, the owner takes something, shoves it in the dog's face, and then gets sent to his crate. Basically, this dog has learned a chain behavior. Owner comes home, I go to my crate. The dog, because the behavior is being repeated, this dog does not know why he's being sent to his crate. There he goes off to his crate. He doesn't know why he's going to his crate. He just knows that when his owner comes home, he gets sent to his crate. This video makes me nervous just to watch the baby and the dog interact because the dog is uh, uh, nervous licking and his ears are back. He's not comfortable. However, um, my concern is not so much with this toddler in the video. Um, my concern is that the, the, the dog will become tolerant of the family and allow the family to do just about anything to the dog without reacting to it. And then the owners get a false sense of confidence that anyone that comes into their home, friends, neighbors, guests, family, visitors, will be able to interact with their dog in this manner. And that is not true. That is how, that's one of the number one reason people get bit in a home is because the owners get that false sense of confidence. I can do anything to my dog. My toddler can do anything to my dog and they're fine. They're great with kids. Yes, they're great with your kids. They may not be great with a guest or a visitor. So what this sets us up for is the failure of a friend, guest, family member, visitor, neighbor coming into our house and getting bit. Um, again, this video does make me nervous to watch the baby and the dog because the dog is very nervous. However, my bigger concern is not that the dog is going to hurt the toddler, but that the dog is going to uh, bite someone that comes into the home and does and mimics the same behaviors the toddler does with the dog. I have so many things to say about this video. Everything from the dog being stressed out by the cameraman's presence to the way the owner is interacting with the dog is absolutely inappropriate. The dog has no idea what he is going, what he is being yelled at for. The dog is showing amazing impulse control. You can see here how quickly he goes from a stressed dog to an up, very upset dog. And the next step in this video would be for the dog to bite the owner. Fortunately, the dog does not bite the owner because of his impulse control, but the way that the owner interacts with this dog um, is in an inappropriate manner, and the dog does not know why he's being in getting in trouble. Quite frankly, I do not know why the dog is getting in trouble because it's all in Spanish. Take a moment and watch this video. You get the idea. This dog is stressed out. When your dog is baring its teeth like this, the next step, uh, the dog is probably growling, we can't hear, but the next step from here is a bite. Do not interact with any dog that is displaying these behaviors.